Let's pick up really quick where we left off in the previous video. We created this little application to tell you what time of day it was, essentially. We want to add some styles with inline styles this time, and we're going to see why this might be the way we choose to do it instead of using a class name. Normally, to do inline styling with HTML, we simply put a style property and set it equal to whatever CSS styles we want. Maybe we want to change the color to be this kind of yellowy color that I just grabbed. Well, let's see what happens when I try to save this. Let me open the console. Notice that it says the style prop expects a mapping from style properties to values instead of a string. We have to remember here that we're not actually inside of HTML, so sometimes the rules are going to be a little bit different. In this case, JSX expects style to not be a string, but instead to be an object, a JavaScript object. So I'm going to delete this and put in an object and say color colon and then as a string that color again. But notice that I have some syntax problems. Remember, anytime I want to change from JSX into JavaScript, I need to wrap my JavaScript with a set of curly braces. This can be a little confusing at first because objects are also wrapped with curly braces, but in order for this to be a JavaScript object, I need to wrap it in curly braces. So we end up with two sets of curly braces. Now when I refresh this, you'll see that I get my more orange or yellow color as the color of this text. If I want to add additional styles, because this is an object, I just add another key value pair. For example, maybe I want it to have a background color of this somewhat redder color that I got. Well, what's my problem now? Take a second to see if you can figure out what's going on. Remember, because of this set of curly braces over here, we're actually inside of JavaScript. And inside of JavaScript, I can't have a dash in the middle of my property name. I technically can in regular JavaScript by surrounding this with quotes, but that's beside the point. Because of this, inside of the object where we're defining our styles, we're going to change any time that there's a dash, we're going to get rid of the dash and make everything camel case. This right here is a legitimate style object. Let me refresh and you can see now we have a different background color. As you might imagine, this style object right here may end up getting longer and longer, in which case this H1 line is going to become really long. And it looks a little bit ugly to split this out onto separate lines. So what I prefer to do is actually make a separate variable. Let's just generically call it styles for now. And put this entire object into that variable. We can split this onto its own lines without it looking funny. Then inside of my curly braces here, where I'm now inside of JavaScript, I can just put the variable name, and that's going to be exactly the same thing. Notice when I save, it continues to work. What's nice about this is as I continue to add styles, it doesn't clutter up my h1 down on line 24. There's a number of little tiny quirks that we have to remember when we're doing these style objects. For example, anytime I have 
a measurement that's going to be in pixels, I technically can just put the actual number value in place and the default will be pixels. So when I save this, you see that I get a slightly smaller font. I put 200, I get a really big font and so forth. I can also still specify pixels, but obviously that's not going to work with numbers by putting 200 px because that's not valid JavaScript anymore. I need to turn this into a string, and now it's valid JavaScript again. And then anytime I want to use another unit like m or vw or percentage or something like that, I will also put that as a string. Also notice once again that I've replaced the dash with a camel cased version of font size. There are some pretty interesting limitations with this. For example, it looks pretty funny when you have to add things like vendor prefixes, but there's other things like pseudo selectors such as colon hover that become actually impossible to do inside of these inline styles. If you need something like that, for now you're better off just doing that in CSS and using class name. And in the future you can learn about really cool styling libraries such as styled components. For now we're just going to keep it simple and stick with either inline styling or using class name and using CSS styles. You may ask yourself why you would ever want to even use an inline style like this. Well, one reason is that you may want something to be more dynamic, in which case JavaScript would actually determine what the styles are. Let's take a quick look at what that might look like. Notice what I've done here where I moved the styles up here above my if else and set a default font size of 30 pixels. Then I let my if else in my JavaScript actually determine what color the font is going to be. I changed not only the time of day string, but I also changed the color property of my styles object. Because it's an object, I can access and create properties just by using the dot syntax. If it's morning time, I use this color. If it's afternoon, I use this color instead. And in any other case, when it's night, I use this color instead. Because I'm recording this at night, this red color is the one that's actually showing up. But let's see what happens when I create the date not for the current time, but instead for a time that was this morning. This is the year, the month, the day, but let's say it's 10 a.m. When I save this, notice that we get instead the color that is the color for morning. If I change this to, let's say, 15, kind of hard to see. Let me choose a different color for the afternoon. You can see a little more clearly this is choosing a different color for the afternoon. This may be a little bit contrived, but the point is we can have dynamic data that actually changes the way that our hard-coded components display. Take a second to try and think of different things that you may be able to accomplish by having these kinds of inline styles. I'd also at this point recommend spending as much time as you can to really solidify the stuff that we've covered together so far. We're about to come up on a topic that typically is a little bit challenging for some people, so it would really help you to make sure that you understand everything we've talked about up until now. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about a concept called props and how we can make our components quite a bit more reusable. 
Props is a super exciting topic, and we're about to get into parts of React that make it extremely useful. So get excited, and let's move on to the next video when you're ready.